it when I banned it tonight. At this time, I'd like to open the meeting of the Carver Conservation Commission for February 7th, 2018. Um, <clears throat> our initial uh, items are uh, appointment with Jeffrey Merritt from 14 Andrews Point Road. So you remember at the last meeting, uh, Jeff came in yep. and had a plan, you know, mm -hmm. for um, lifting the existing house. And, and you guys had a bunch of questions and stuff. So he's just coming now informally to discuss a change in the plans. But, he, but he's kept, you know, kept it as a continued hearing. So, um, but this is just an informal. Thanks. Thank you. Oh my God. Is this the wetland scientist? So, Jeff Merritt, 14 Andrews Point Road. <coughs> Joe Bazzanotti, both on it. So, we were, you know, last meeting we talked about replacing the foundation, um, lifting the house up, and certainly some concerns that we took back. And we were supposed to come tonight with a revised plan showing the new retaining walls, elevations, length of wall, all of that with the backfill material. Um, but we took the concerns and said maybe there's a different way to approach this. So. That's why we're here tonight, uh, maybe to continue that discussion just a little bit. Mm -hmm. So from the original meeting, um, there were two problems that we were trying to solve here. Um, septic pits within the 65-foot buffer zone at Andrews Point Road. The condition and designing the existing foundation. And I do have a couple of pictures in here because I know it came up at the last meeting mm -hmm. about from the condition of the foundation. Yeah, from inside the, yep. the inside where we couldn't get to? Okay. Correct. Yep. And so um, we presented at last meeting. Uh, about the new leach field 1500 gallon septic tank came up as an issue um, just a question not really an issue uh -huh. and then uh, of course existing foundation would raise the um, elevation there and um, the concerns were retaining wall the uh, filling in that void with about 110 yards of fill I think <coughs> is what we said the last time um, what the backfill material was going to be and of course the condition of the foundation came up so um, tonight again, we were supposed to show up with the revised plan, but instead we really started to rethink the issue a little bit, and um, that's why we're here right now to talk to you folks, to the commission, and see what they look for some support for maybe a little different approach to this. So if you go to the page with the uh, with the pictures, and again it's the internal pictures to your point, um, it shows the condition of the inside of the foundation. You can see it's cinder block, um, and this was not one picture, not one wall taken. These are multiple around that 32 by 32 foundation. You can see that some of the cinder blocks certainly are, th there's no footings here. Um, some of it is propped up with old bricks. Um, and you can see that some of the lally columns supports in the center of the house, no foundation, no footing. And it's just, you know, you can see some rocks coming through the foundation. It's, it's a problem for us. And that was really what was driving us towards the replace the foundation. And that turned into let's, let's raise the house up and put a real foundation under it. So for tonight, if you turn to the, I think the last page, what we're really, look, really looking for is your support, and again, to dis continue this discussion. And what we're proposing is that we remove the two septic pits from that 65-foot buffer zone, that we move the septic leach field outside the 100-foot buffer zone. This would allow us to move the septic tank outside the 100-foot buffer zone, and then actually demo the existing house and rebuild it, move it outside the 65. And the reason we can't go more than the 65, go to like the 100 range, is because that would put it in the middle of our garage. We got turning radius problems, all that stuff would come up. So, <laughs> yeah, okay. you know, I think we're trying to make, um, we're trying to make it better for everybody. Mm -hmm. So um, benefits, as I see it, would be, uh, again, the two septic pits, the uh, septic tank, which I mentioned, the house would come out of that, would no longer sit in that buffer zone, the 65 foot. The good news here is that the retaining walls no longer would be needed, just a natural grade of the property. It works a lot better. It really does. Um, so minor changes to the existing grades. Um, I don't know exactly what that would be because I don't have a real plan yet. Mm -hmm. And again, we're looking for that support to tell us that 
our next step now would be go, you know, engage a builder, a designer, come back to the commission and say, you know, okay, now, now this is what it would really look like, right? Again, validating some of those assumptions. I think it's an environmentally better solution, moving that 1,000 square foot uh, impervious building outside of that buffer zone. And of course, aesthetics and everything else, we're taking it off of Sampson Pond by, you know, certainly better than 30 feet further than, than it is now. And um, so I'll open it up to any questions. Our next step would be, if we have your support, um, would be to start to engage a builder and a designer and see what this, where this really takes us. Great. Mr. Chairman, may I speak? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, the only, I'm very pleased with what I see here. Don't misunderstand me. I just want to know, what are you going to do with that area that you, now you're taking out the old foundation and I see everything here. Yep. Um, what are you going to put in its place? Is it, uh, you're going to come in with some process fill? So if we if we went with the new proposal, yeah. obviously where we put a new foundation, there would be material that we'd have to take out of there. Uh -huh. I, I would be thinking we take that that natural material that's there and fill the old where the old foundation was. You, right now that foundation. Well, you're going to remove the old foundation in its oh, entirety. Yes. Yep. Okay. All right. Yep. Yeah. So the, the cinder blocks, the pictures. Uh -huh. So we take take all that <laughs> out. All the cinder block out. Yeah. Okay. It's the only question. I have. Uh, you? you currently have a uh, a deck that's yeah. off the side of the house too. I imagine that's coming down as well. So what we were planning on is taking the house outside the 65, and the deck then would probably go on the back of the house. And probably sit within, you know, between the 65, within the 65 foot buffer zone. That's what we were thinking. So, I, actually, I have a, a picture I can show you. I forgot to show this to you. I'll bring it up here because it's kind of small to see. I'm sorry about that. It's all right. But um, what you can see here, I'm terrible about the glass. All right, I see. So, here's the existing house mm -hmm. and deck. Mm -hmm. And so, made a cutout, same area, same size, and yeah. just spun it. Bring the house into the area between the 65 and the 100, uh -huh. but then the deck would still be on the back. Just but it's already disturbed land anyhow, so it's oh, already disturbed already land. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. And other, there wouldn't be any. Uh, the, it would be the same house, so same location, same same. Yeah, you're not. Same you don't footprint. have to cut any trees down. I've been on a lot. You don't have to do any of that stuff. This, mm. The land is already disturbed. Right. Okay. Thank you. And I think it actually works. My opinion is it actually works better with the existing grades. It really does. It eliminates all the fill, mm -hmm. painting walls, all of that work. I mean, it's still significantly more cost to go about it this way. Um, yeah. But I think at the end of the day, we probably You're building a house, better, of course, better products. Yeah. What What are your? Uh, I don't need that anymore. Okay. Um, what are your uh, plans for landscaping the area where the current house would be removed from? That's what I'm sure. um, so I haven't, haven't really got that far. I know I talked to Brooke about it just a little bit and um, thinking I think there are some options there, whether we keep it natural the way it is now. Um, maybe there's some plantings that we could talk about, whatever that some might be. I know plantings, indigenous plantings. Okay. I think there's some options there. And we actually come with a real plan and put it in front of you folks, in front of the commission and say that it looks like a good idea. Now, now we can really start to talk about what else, how would you treat that area? All right, because my concern with that, I, I also live on Sampson's Pond, and um, I, I don't know if you're there all the time during the summer, but uh, this past summer in mid-September, we had a rather uh, large uh, algae bloom. In the summer of 2016, we had three of them, all really, really bad, uh, you know, at the point where the lake was e extremely uh, smelly and almost hot to the touch. And, uh, you know, a lot of that has to do, I believe, with, uh, with the fact that things are changing at, between people's homes and the shoreline. And there are more fertilizers and, and less of what was there naturally. So, uh, you know, if it were up to me, I would want to go more towards the natural look, of planting trees, not grass, not fertilizers, things like that. So, you know, from a standpoint of, of trying to protect that pond for everyone who enjoys it, including the town townspeople who and used yourself, to... And yourself, of course. And yourself, but, uh, you know, that's where the town beach is, it's where the town launches, so, sure. um, you know, just from a standpoint of uh, trying to um, keep the the area, bet the 65-foot area, as as a cleanser for water that uh, finally leaches its way into the pond. So that's something that I would be more interested in. 
good thing is that's getting the septic system out of there. Yeah, oh, I know. It's, no, moving the septic system Very is huge. The that's, fact that you're getting a septic that's, system out that's a big, sure. big step. So, really, that's that's my only uh, my only concern okay. yeah. um, about that. Just continue this again. Yep. Okay. Yep. So, can I make a proposal before the board? Please. Right? Yeah, please. Thank you. Suggest. I make a proposal before the board that we accept the plans in its generality, uh, subject to uh, the final plans and, of course, the plantings within the 65 foot. I'd like to get a second on that <coughs> verbally. What do you think? I agree. Um, uh, I, I'm I'm concerned with not concerned, but I would like to see the uh, natural the planting, so natural the plantings, natural plantings, and also yeah, if absolutely. if the deck is raised up off the ground, I'd like to see as as little disturbance underneath it as possible. You know, uh, maybe fewer uh, pillars holding it up and and heavier lumber going cross bracing. You know, just to to uh, minimize the effect, the yeah, impact. The concrete. Yeah. The concrete. So. But I think the, that most of the things here are a, a big improvement over what is currently there. For sure. And uh, moving moving something out of the 65 foot and away from the pond is always pleases us. It's always good. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, your input. Okay. So, uh, if you folks want to, we'll go ahead with the your you know, revision of your plans and so on and so forth. Uh, we'll, I guess we won't be hearing you again tonight. You'll revise plans and then come in? Okay. So you can just let me know and then we you know, continue to whenever, whatever hearing, you know, that you have the new yeah. information. Okay. We're going to so need a site plan from them, uh, including the topo, so we yeah. know exactly how you're doing everything. You know, the topo is very important, uh, right. not just showing a flat map. Mm -hmm. uh, and when do you think you'll be ready? I, I don't know. <laughs> well, this is the idea. We got to continue. I really don't know. This, this is really the first step. Yeah. We're, and we're, now the, the rest is, you know, start to engage some folks right. and, and see, you know, put some plans together and keep keep it rolling a little bit. I, right. We I'd like to think three, four weeks, but I, yeah, I oh, guess okay. we can continue for two weeks at a time because that's how far apart okay. our meetings are. So <clears throat> what we do is we continue again now to our second meeting this month. And if you're not ready, then we'll simply continue again. Perfect. Well, we'll be you. ready in two weeks. That's for sure. Yeah, we will. Right. You just so keep Joe as I'm your thinking engineer. What's you I'm keep Joe as your Joe Webby for the civil. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Thanks. Then that's that's. Yeah. Uh, that's for us. Thank you yeah. very Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Improve things. You're looking at it like that. <laughs> it's just a discussion. We have. Right. There's, there's no vote. All right. Needed. One down. Right. Have a good night. Take care. One down and two to go. Let's see. Zero rod. We got a septic repair, 50 Bunnies Road. Let's see what. Rick, what's the, the septic yep. repair, 50 Bunnies Road? Yeah, that was a, uh, just a septic repair that? that I looked at. Yeah, a little small cottage on Bunnies uh, Road. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The plan for that. So I went and looked at that, and that was fine, you know, with the, what we're doing with the septic okay. repairs. And then we had another one. I mean, Update on the floating solar. Oh, update. Uh, no update. No update. <laughs> I don't okay. know what's going on with that. So we're hope we're still pending yep. on that. Okay. Yep. How about yep. uh, Forty Main Street <coughs> inspection? Oh, Forty Main Street. Eight o'clock. Uh, what's that? No, no, we're we're not into the hearings yet. Oh, so and there's here. no times. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. It's yeah. floating solar. Going through the business. This is for. Thank you. For Forty South Main. Mm -hmm. um, I had a call, and she they want to install an invisible fence. 40 you know, South Main. For 40 South Main, yep, for, okay. you know, for the dogs. So it's not 40 Main, it's 40, it's 40 South, South Main. Oh, yeah. Okay. 40 South Main, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oops. Well, okay. Um, so I, I didn't think that, that that was, well, you can see where the location is yeah. from Samson's Pond, but I don't see an issue with that. I mean, they, no, they it's just invisible bring fence. in like a little. They put I'm a sure line in the ground. Those. They do those by hand? She said maybe a little small machine, but. No, not even that. Yeah. I, I've seen it's like a saw cut. Yeah, and it's they up drop, kind of behind. They the drop the line in. Yeah, right near the garage and yeah. up up away from the pond. Yeah. So. I'm gonna get one.
and put in I wine. I think there's no reason for them to I don't have see a problem with that. Okay. It keeps the dogs out of the water, which right. is a good thing. Right. This is my brother-in-law's house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's that? <clears throat> this is my brother-in-law's house. Oh. <laughs> I guess that'll pass. No. Crack the whip on him. <laughs> okay, so the, okay, so they're doing it in the garage side, yeah, out to the road, the or close to the road. Because that was the one we, I looked at before, right? When he was going to do the garage. Didn't, didn't the garage was outside of the, the 100 feet. That right. the, You looked at it for the uh, gazebo. Oh, the gazebo. That's on what it was. Uh, on yeah. stilts. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, that was uh, outside yeah. of the existing footprint. Yeah. Uh, does he live next to you? No. He lives um, He lives next to the Savory Cove condominiums on Shaw, oh, on Shaw okay. Road. Yep, 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 yep. yep. This nice is the area. condominiums here. Yeah. Robertson's live here. And 58 goes yeah. right here. Yeah. <laughs> it is nice. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Sounds good. Yeah. They have a German Shepherd too. Puppy. Oh, they do. That's why. Yeah, he's a little <laughs> wild guy. <laughs> Where's uh, 92B South Main? That is down a long, long driveway. There's a couple little small houses at the very end of the driveway. Anyway, you, you go by a bog. And there. Okay, it's down below Hanula, so bog there. Yeah, so I think it is. Is this a uh, health department uh, mandated? Yep. Yep. Okay, good. Board health, yep, they have the board health permit. Okay. Okay. So uh, that's 92. 92B. Mm -hmm. Oh, should be, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so let's look at our minutes from January 24th.
for no it looks good to me i'm good all right i'll make a motion that we uh, approve the minutes of january 24th as written i'll second been moved and seconded to approve the minutes of january 24th 2018 as written all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. any opposed <coughs> pass unanimous okay so we're into our hearings they're continued so we don't have a oh, clock yeah. we have no time. right so yeah, the yeah. right the first uh, hearing's been continued so we yeah. go to zero rochester road dpse 126-555 oh that's right yeah. so thank you. and we have revised plans he's here with mm -hmm. uh, My name is Arthur Borden. I'm here representing Edeville Land Holdings with the civil company that did the site plans. And I have with me tonight a solar consultant, Mr. Kevin Black. So if there's questions on siting or of construction, I think between the two of us we can probably answer your concerns. Who, who's this other gentleman, Arthur? Kevin Black. Kevin Black, he's from? Um, 60 Hertz AC, LLC. I'm a retired uh, com electric guy. So uh, your expertise is in setting up the solar array? Yes, you know, building substations, lines, everything, you know. Okay. So solar. Um, Do you have anything you can put in the record for your credentials and so on? Um, I got a business card. Okay, um, good enough. And you can sign in too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just sign in. yeah. Um, okay. <clears throat> Thanks. And if you give a copy to the secretary, please. Yeah. Good night, thanks. Okay, please uh, proceed. Okay, the, the first plan I have here is really for orientation purposes. Uh, to the far left is Edaville's existing parking lot and their main entrance. Uh, Pine Street is out here. Uh, Rochester Road. Eda Avenue comes up here in the back. The block that we're proposing to put the solar array on is right in here. It's, the growers know it as the old Washburn bog. Uh, sold to the Hanulas and sold to Edaville Land Holdings a few years ago. There is a, an existing bog road that runs from Pine Street along the westerly side of the bog up to Eda Avenue. Uh, there's a little crossroad between two bogs and uh, another access on this side. So it's, it's where the, the current bog roads are. We had a ANRAD in front of you several months ago for a determination uh, on the bog, and at that time it was determined that it was in fact a wetland bog. Uh, we've used the top of the outer bank uh, for the edge of the resource area, so all of our buffer zones are measured from that, the 65 and the 100 foot buffer. Uh, as you can see, the, again, the, the existing bog road on this side Cross road here, and then the other broad road up to Eda Avenue. Oh. Our original filing had a access road running from Pine Street all the way to, up to Eda Avenue. Uh -huh. And DEP, when they came back with their uh, filing and give, gave us a file number, were concerned because we, there was uh, over 5,000 square feet of filling that was going to be needed to make this bog road safe. Uh, 
in the process of going through technical review with the fire department, EMS, and everybody, uh, we've taken out that long access road completely and have now two accesses, one on the westerly side that would come in from the Edaville parking lot, doesn't require any filling. Uh, it's a you know, sort of a modified hammerhead that gives them access to the solar array and access to the transformer and the electrical business. And just recently we're talking with um, Assistant Deputy Chief Boyle at our TRC meeting. They had requested a uh, second means of access. So we provided one on the easterly side coming off the existing bog road uh, and then modifying it. There would be a the gate that they're looking for here so that it, the whole facility is fenced, gated. Uh, the gates will be the typical uh, carver lock that fire department wants. Um, so this, this basically eliminated uh, over 5,000 square feet of filling. So now we're looking at uh, about 1,500 and 50 square feet within the bog area for the sauna tubes that we'll put the rack system on. We're proposing that at this time. Uh, there's a possibility that when the geotech people are done uh, analyzing what's there, we may be able to put these in just on the, uh, the rack system without using the sauna tubes, but uh, we're, we're presenting this to you at this point. That would be the the extent of any wetland loss would be where the, solar, uh, where the sauna tubes are going to be for the rack and for the individual inverters that connect everything. Uh, we had previously proposed over 6,000 square feet of replication, uh, basically widening out this old bog down here on either side, and we've decided that we would leave that replication. So basically it's, it's almost a four to one replication for what's being lost. Uh, we provided a uh, replication plan from a wetland scientist, how we would do it, uh, get it done. We would match the grade that's there now, um, transplant some vines. That there's plenty of bogs on Edaville's property that we can transplant some vines from and uh, you know, make, it, make it more of a bog. Uh, one of the purposes is to be able to harvest vines on a yearly basis, uh, doing small little clumps and offering them for sale in the Edaville gift shop. So if somebody wanted to take some Edaville vines home with them, then they, they, could, they could do that. Uh, okay. <coughs> uh, so that's, uh, that's really the in, in, intent of the project. Uh, it would allow Edaville to basically come off the grid and be self-sustaining. Uh, the power generated from this is not going out to the grid, it's going into Edaville to service the park. Uh, this past year there was a substantial upgrade in the electrical infrastructure within the park. Uh, there was new uh, underground lines put in, new transformers. Uh, so everything, you know, from, from the connecting, connecting line up here into the park is already in place uh, with, with this in mind. So. Um, so if you have any, any questions about what I've proposed or if you need clarification on how things are going to be built, Kevin can answer those for you. I have a couple of questions. Right. You go first. All right. This should be fun. Um, you're planning on putting <coughs> this passive solar on wetlands. I'm just, I just want to make sure we're understanding this. Yep. Now, you're going to collect vines from somewhere else. No, the the panels will Where be you set up. Where you get the vines from? The the rack the rack system will be set. The panels will be set up what, five feet or so above the bog. Yeah. Oh, we already so, have that in town. Okay. All right, and there's actually there's the the these arrays are set 18 feet apart. So you're going into the you're going into the cranberry business. Mm -hmm. I'm asking because if you're yeah. if you're if you're gathering the vines to sell, you're in the cranberry business. What you're saying. Am I right? It's already a bond. It's been a bond. I understand it, but do you have a farm <laughs> permit for that? I'm just asking questions. Yeah. I don't know. I believe Edaville had a well. You have to farm have it permit. in his name or to, yeah. or Edaville's name. Do you have a? Do you that's, have a, a farm a point. permit? In order, right? In order to uh, 
work with it. We probably, yeah. it's been an inactive bog, so there hasn't been any need for a farm permit, but now if you want to activate uh, it, activate it yeah. in this way, you probably will have to get a, a farm permit plan right. and permit for it. Yeah. We'll certainly look into that. Okay. And I mean, that was how, um, you know, paddocks work. Yes, he right. already harvesting right. that, so, yeah. Yeah. so that's how they got away with it. We, we already have something like this here in town right down the street, and it was supposed to be uh, collecting uh, vines from there, and they all died. I, I don't see anybody ever collecting anything out of them, so I don't think well, that's he's, he's doing some. some yeah, some but you know what I'm saying. It's, it's not going to fly. It's a way of... It's a way of keeping it in agricultural use, right. but uh, this is uh, this is on wetlands. Yeah. Well, that was wetlands too. That we yeah. we well, did I a whole. I understand that. Right. Same That's as what I'm saying. It the, didn't the paddock work. bog was done just like this with a yeah. coring samples taken, and it confirmed that this is a um, an active wetland bog, even though it was not very uh, productive as far as the crop goes. And uh, I don't think Maypiece even ever showed an interest in working it. Mm. But uh, I um I, I don't you know, I I don't I don't have a problem with the uh I got that piece of paper that what do you need? It's like a piece of paper I gave you earlier for the Thanks. Okay. This is somebody else want to answer say question. You are ma'am Please. We'll be hearing you talk then after we get a little further we'll along. Hear from you. Uh, another thing I noticed, uh, our, our maps are not quite the same as the map. So we're going to have, those will have to be corrected oh. with the uh, orange markings, well, I, I guess. Yeah, I think, it, I think the one that I have often uh, doesn't include the, you know, the orange areas and so on. It doesn't have the access off Eda Avenue. Have, unless I have the wrong one. I don't think it shows the fire. Okay. It shows just the one. I think that was Yep. Well, we I don't know. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> yep. Sorry. Gave some long maps. All right. Yeah. Broke that. Oh, it's not color. Oh. Okay. Give me the color. Okay. Okay. This one color. Get our own color. Yes. Yours on color. Oh, no. These didn't get any colors on them. Whoops. We can have the. Uh, but no. they do. Does it have the Eda Avenue? Um, yeah, it does have an indication okay. on it, but uh, that's fine. Yeah, well, they, no, they have to actually have the color. Oh, okay, color. it's got yeah, it's got the it's yeah. got long over it. Okay, it's that's not color like that. Okay, it's this, which that it's doesn't, uh, but it's a combination oh. of both. Propose <laughs> twelve foot wide access road. Okay, into the right. well, so he has to replicate that. Here, for the record, you will have to have two copies yeah. of this. Yeah. Color this is what one's here. Uh, no. So, if you take a look at it, it is. Uh, yeah. I don't really have that questions about it's all inside anything. the bog. It's all the bog lines are in there. It's the situation is, I mean, we walked it. This is not what it looks yeah. like, and it's, um, yeah, you see, yeah. it's very similar it's to existing the bog was right situation. Here. Yeah. That's what part of it is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you think the harvest you like. Yeah. You're just providing replication, so there, there will be more mining. Yeah, eventually. I mean, I, I, I think we should go with it. Um, I have a couple of questions. Yes, go ahead. All right. Um, the two uh, proposed fire access roads. What mm -hmm. kind of material would they be? They would be. Uh, we we call it construction wrap. It's uh, reprocessed asphalt. Mm -hmm. Surf, where the surface at the fire department would be satisfied with. Is it impervious? No. No, actually, it actually it's very similar to the parking lot next door in Edaville. It's a, it's a processed material that's, that's uh, impervious. Okay. So water goes through it? Yeah. Okay. Um, my next question is that you said that the, 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 um, the thought is to harvest the vines for sale yep. at the souvenir store. Now, as those vines are removed, are they going to be replaced for the following year? I think we would we would have to develop a plan for that. Uh, we're not looking to to 
you know, that's the farm plan. Yeah. Rip all the vines it's... out. I mean, we'd only take out a, a select few to provide, you know, vines to sell in the gift shop. Uh, I don't know how they revegetate themselves. I, I mean, I would defer to my wetland scientist on that. I will get that answer for you. Okay, that's. I think that's an important part of this. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. if yeah, they, we don't want to just have a small. If you take all more per year than grows back, eventually right. it'll be a, a, a barren field. Um, my next question is: uh, Are there going? Is there going to have to be any uh, tree cutting along the side to allow sunlight to reach the uh, the panels that are are I would say on the southeastern edge of the of the array? Yeah, where all the trees yeah. are over there. The the actual tree line is is out here. All right. All right, uh -huh. and it's. Uh, <coughs> Probably it's close to 70 feet away from this nearest corner of this panel here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're not so we're not proposing to have to cut any trees down to make this work. <coughs> okay. And I think is, is that, that something? Side, um, just uh, we're talking about plant the planning stuff. Does that the side that they you need to leave a buffer for planning? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. planning would re would require a vegetated buffer. So. They have to make sure that they couldn't cut a lot of the trees on that side. Right. Well, I mean, yeah. they have a, they have people that live right there anyway. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, the the last thing that I have, and it's uh, it's something that that we are, I guess, for lack of a better term, we've never had to deal with before uh, since the new Mass DEP wetlands program policy came out in September of last year uh, regarding photovoltaic systems. Um, and on page three of their, um, their handout that's dated November 16th of last year, uh, it says citing photovoltaic systems. And the second sentence in the paragraph says, placement of PVS within jurisdictional wetlands is highly discouraged. So. I, I'm, I'm kind of at a at a crossroads here of of uh, our, us as a as an entity getting our hand slapped by the DEP uh, for allowing something that they are pretty clear about not not, allowing. not wanting not necessarily allowing but not right, wanting right, yeah, yeah. highly discouraged <laughs> to me is is them saying we, we don't want this to happen anymore so. Um, I, it's just it's something that concerns me. Yeah, my my, res my response would be, and I, I've spoken with Brooke about this. When they issued their file number, they review everything, and that policy was in place for several months prior to us filing, to the point where they would have looked at their policy as part of the overall review, and the only thing they flagged was the over 5,000 square feet of filling. Uh, that would have wanted us to have to file for a water quality permit. So we took that out so we don't have to go that route. We sent them, them a plan uh, showing that and have not heard anything back from them. Uh, but again, all my years dealing with DEP, uh, typically they, as they review something, they generate a punch list. If, there, if there's any concerns at all on their part, they look at, at all the regulations uh, and flag them so that when you start your review and issue an order of conditions. If you don't address those particular concerns, then they'll step in and get involved and uh, appeal the order of conditions. But if we address what their initial concern was, which we have, uh, uh, they didn't flag that as an issue. That's true. <coughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, that's typically what they do. So I was a little surprised that they didn't mention the policy, but. Okay. Maybe because that wasn't written up. The you know. um, all right. I'm asking uh, the, the uh, state, the DP, to uh, consider revising this with the pressure from the DOER, Department of Energy Resources. Oh, with their policy? Yeah. The new policies? Yeah. Because of the fact that uh, it simply is um, it's something that we can't afford anymore to, uh, to deal with this. Mm -hmm. And not only that, uh, the protection of the wetlands is fine and we're not damaging the wetlands they have not found any indication to show any negative effects on the wetlands so uh, i'm just I, th I 
I've asked uh, some people to look into us, uh, Senator Pacheco's office, and uh, start pushing back because I think that uh, Carver needs the freedom to use its lands. For and, good. and bogs may be, you know, for, for the soul of the bogs, yeah. maybe a little different than, say, like putting them in the middle of a, a red maple swamp. Right. <coughs> right. Where you'd have to cut all the trees and everything. Yes. So you're right. They may be looking at that a little differently, even though it's a bordering vegetative wetland. Yeah. It's still, a, you know, a bog system as opposed to, like you say, a, a red maple swamp or something where you'd have to yeah. cut trees and things. So, so uh, a lot of people. That's a lot of animals live in there. All right. That, my, my final question is um, there is on the southwest corner of your drawing right at the edge of the existing older cranberry bog, mm -hmm. uh, an existing flume that goes under the road, under um, Street. Pine Street. Yep. And I, I believe, I've looked at a map, I believe that feeds another bog. Is that correct? Uh, actually, yeah, there's a, there's a uh, bog further out in the back there. Yeah. Most likely finds its way into this water hole for this uh -huh. for the bog hole on the other side of Pine Street. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and have, I, I'm I'm just wondering if uh, anything has been uh, said to that bog owner um, about possible um, you know changes in the in the water that's that's eventually flowing into his bogs if there's less foliage. Uh, in the in the bog that you're planning on building on, um, you know, it could with less sunlight, it could change water temperature, it could change nutrients uh, flowing under Pine Street onto his his oh. box. I, I will I will ask that uh, either they'll take a look and it's, consult you know, with that uh, butter. Do you know who the owner of that uh, bog across Pine Street is? Uh, he should be in a butter. I uh, I think from the Butters list that it's uh, an old heckler bog. Okay. That that would be in the uh, trust now. Right. Okay. Heckler up off of Meadow Street. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have the the, the green cards? Mm -hmm. Oh, heckler. Yeah. Yep. yep. There's a there's a heckler. The address is Indian Neck Road, but. Right. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a it's a trustee for uh, I, I don't know if she's a family member or but she's a trustee for the estate. So are those active over there? Those bugs? Uh, I'm not sure. I've, most of Heckler's bugs have been pretty much uh, going into dormancy. Yeah, yeah. We, we had but, they uh, has one on his property too. I right. Think. Yeah. The, 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 the one by the fire right in here is a Heckler bog. Right. Yeah. Also. Yeah. Right. That, yeah. But, that's slowly becoming a forest. Yeah, she, yeah, she yeah. came in about that one day. Yeah. Okay. One last question: Is this solar array replacing the one that he, that Mr. Deli Priscoli had originally <coughs> planned for the bog across from the train platform? Yes. Okay, so he's not going to do that one no. any longer because he came, bef they came before right. us. Right. By Dino Land. Yeah. yeah. Right. No, he, he had looked at that as an option, but this this is a, a better location to tie into the existing electrical system. Aesthetically, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. And they have a question on uh, the stormwater. You, uh, you were subject to the stormwater. Uh, the stormwater regs, right? Did you have, did you have to do calculations and things for? I will have to look at that. I did not provide any calculations. Yeah, I don't know but if you do. In this case, where it's on the bog, I don't know if you really do or not. I don't know if that's an no. issue. I, I don't it's because. Know. I know Stephen. Stephen asked me because I think that was going to be something planning yeah. was going to bring up. So he Pl mentioned stormwater. Oh, planning, planning needs stormwater calculations for the the other project for the parking lot. Oh, nothing. Oh, oh, okay. So in this case, we're not we're not taking out any of the right. existing right. surface that catches water now, other than the where the sauna tubes are going to go, and we're we'll give replacing that four to one. So we're not You're taking not away drain from the that parking lot into this bog area, are you? No. No, there's a there's a we can get into that in, in a couple of weeks, but there's a um, whole infiltration system being planned for that, so that no water leaves Edenville's parking okay. lot. Right. It's all all kept on site. Nothing nothing will get to this bog. And just for your information, the uh, the next hearing is the filing for the parking lot in Edenville. Yeah. So you'll be able to see all the drainage. Yeah. <clears throat> you know. Okay. So maybe now we should. 
pass this leaf butter here. You are, ma'am? Nancy yeah. Gondalves. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, your name, please? Nancy Gondalves. Can, can you sign in two minutes before you leave? Or yeah. They say, yep, sign you in. Sign in. Celia's and so on? I'm, yeah, the Celia's are across the street from me. Okay, good, so we can locate you. So, right, right. So, um, I have a, a, a few concerns from, for myself and for them. Um, aside from, I, do, I also have concerns about it being in wetlands. I don't know that it's a good thing, and I'm a little confused. It, are wetlands being filled in? Uh, and are they being filled in and then replicated somewhere? Or is that no? The only yeah. replication that needs to occur is where the the small amount of area that the posts take up, okay. that the panels sit on. But otherwise, they, the panels are high enough that they don't block the wetlands, and mm -hmm. so that they the, the wetlands can continue to function as wetlands. Yeah, they okay. only block the sun. Um, I'm curious: is there any type of um, border around this? Is it only only the panels are going in the field, or is there any type of um, is there anything going to be any type? There's of a fence that goes around it, ma'am. It will be a, how how high is the fence going to be? So I'm thinking visually for for the abutters that are right next to it, um, is this going to affect their property value? It shouldn't. There are trees all mm -hmm. along the Edaville on the Edaville property so there behind their no houses. So there are no trees cut down. No. All existing trees that are there now will never be cut down. If it's next. if it's approved by this, if it's approved by this, I'll make sure that that's part of the deal that nothing gets cut. Period. Okay. And I always I want to mention also I, I talked with the uh, the planning board director. I don't see it. And no. when they go to planning, which they have to do because they need a special permit, that's a big concern of theirs is is visual screening and right, a stockade right. fence or a chain link fence. And right. So that's kind of the, I think their meeting is 27th, are Yes. Oh. The fence that's around. That's kind of the, How high is this fence supposed to be, gentlemen? It's six feet. Six, six feet? Six yeah, feet. Six, yeah, yeah. Chain, chain link fence, six, six feet. Fence. And it's basically <laughs> to protect the panels from vandalism and. and right. Uh, um, so I know, as they said, um, visually this is more aesthetic for them, but it may not be for the homeowners that are right there. So if they have another option for another place in the park where it's doable, they it sounds like they've already planned it out previously, but they changed it to this abandoned bog. Um, could it possibly go back to this to the previous plan where it won't be affecting a butters with his? I just don't. Between you and me, ma'am, I, I just don't want the idea of filling in wetlands, period. So. I don't either. And I, I don't know that there is no effect to the wetlands. I mean, I don't think there's been, I, don't th I think Sola is too new to know what the long-term effects are. The, the bog that we have that was built on a wetland was took four and a half years in the planning and exploration of it. And they're pretty uh, happy that it is working as it said it would, and it's not affecting the wetland. The wetland is continuing to function as a wetland. The panels are producing electricity, and that's the plain and simple. Uh, it's, I mean, some people are upset about the idea of solar. It's actually, it's a lot better than having a coal mine next to you and having a coal burning power plant with coal ash, which is full of toxins. Well, if that were the case, I'd be here for that also. <laughs> yes. But yes, see, this this is something that we I, I'm 
a proponent, very strong proponent of alternative energy. I'm not energy. against solar. Uh, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm against else. putting it in wetlands. I'm against disturbing wetlands, not putting solar in wetlands, but disturbing the wetlands. I think too many, too much wetlands are being disturbed, and and it's just getting out of control. Um, the other concern I have is our, our water table. Um, all the rain we have today, I live across the street, and I have a French drain and a sump pump. And even with that, I still have water in my basement. Mm -hmm. I have an unfinished basement. These people have a finished basement. So if anything, if this disturbs the water table in any way, it's with any, any disturbance to it, they could end up with water in their basement, in their finished basement. So that's another concern. Yeah. We can't say that, you can't guarantee that if you disturb this wetland, if you put sauna tubes in or whatever you do to it, you can't guarantee that it's not going to disturb the water table and disrupt the whole system and force water into their property and then have a domino effect and I could have more water in my basement. Uh, right now I feel like I have a, a river running under my house. Mm -hmm. I, it's. Uh, I, it's, uh, I'll never have a finished basement. I, I have enough water, I don't want more. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I have a, a lot of concerns about it. Uh, Thank I you. don't know what to say about that, except that sometimes these things have to be solved after the problems develop. You know, in other words, <laughs> you, you cannot, you cannot, well, a lot of highways are built, and all of a sudden then we find that the highway was messed things up. Well, Route 44 in North Carver <laughs> uh, created a lot of problems for that area there. So I I, am, I see your point of view, but... Uh, well, if we can anticipate a problem and, and this can be changed where it won't affect the butters, mm. then why not? The real question is whether what they're doing is going to really change the status of the wetland. See, and I, I don't see that it is. Um, Tim? This doesn't divert water anywhere else. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, no. It's all, you know, it, it comes off the panels and, and goes into the wetlands. So it's not good, it shouldn't, you're not adding water or taking water away, so it shouldn't affect the water table. <coughs> and and there, there is an existing system through the property. It, it, there's a drain <laughs> up here under Eda Avenue that mm -hmm. intercepts a, a bog across the way and it all flows down through here and eventually out that culvert across under Rochester yeah, on the Pine Street. Right. Uh, it'll continue to do that. I'll tell you, I, I personally am a proponent for passive solar. I, you know, we have it all over town in different areas on the upland areas. I am not a proponent of passive solar in a wetlands. And this is considered a wetlands. That's that's all I have to say about that. Well, the DP, as I say, did extensive studying of the paddock bog. That's why it took four and a half years to get it approved. And they found they found that the ideas were um, solid in their planning, the engineering and so on and so forth of it. So uh, based on their findings in that case, I think that we basically I have to apply the same um, findings here that given careful consideration of the land and the, and the structures that are going to go on it, I that it is not um, a hazard or a negative activity. Well, that's where, you know, your opinion, my yes. opinion, you know, we all have different opinions. We definitely so, do. You know, but we're, the we're all looking for, our purpose here is to save the wetlands and yeah. provide passive solar where we can, and so forth and so on. So we all have different opinions about this, and, you know, we take a vote. This will go before DEP, and they will, uh, they will uh, take their position on whether, you know, if they have a problem with it, they mm -hmm. will speak up. Yeah. So... Um, They'll intervene if they don't yeah. think that you've made a good decision. So, uh, well, you know, I'm I'm in favor of solar also, but I I feel I don't feel comfortable voting on this tonight unless I have an answer on on the on the vines and how they're going to be 
sustain well, vines and year they don't over even, year. They can't even tell us if they have a, fa a, a farm. Uh, well, land. okay, in that case, we probably have to continue yeah. the hearing. That's what I, I, yeah. I, I'm concerned about that. If, they, mm -hmm. if there's a viable mm -hmm. plan to maintain the, the, the uh, vines mm -hmm. year after year, yeah. something that we can put in the order of conditions yeah. and enforce, yeah. then, uh, then, you know, everything else seems to be okay. But without that information, I don't feel comfortable today in, in I ruling, really ruling that one that way or another. include, you know, the harvesting of it. Too, I so still don't think it, they actually were doing that. And it, right. I still don't think it hits our jurisdiction until there's a farm plan. And I'm not sure if you need one or not. Mm -hmm. And these gentlemen don't know if they need one or not. I mean, something has to be straightened out at that point before yeah. we even get into this. Because you'd think it would. I'm just saying. It would have to be an active bog. In order yes. to going to go through an active bog. I think, yes, I think you need right. a farm plan to go yeah. through an active bog. So yeah, that that which is how he got you know that's how Paddock got it because he was he got an yeah. agricultural exemption because it was right. an active bog. Right. It was so an active bog. Case, this yeah. one isn't. Mm. Well, that's well, we don't know. We don't. Yeah, it we is don't. An active, let's face it. Um, well, it when Come we on, get on the site, I don't see anybody picking anything out of it. Who's running the bogs? I mean, I, I mean that doesn't get I know harvested uh, though. Eighty eight piece manages some of the bogs, but does I, John have uh, anybody running? I, I believe the bogs that are being picked actively. Uh, there's an agreement, an agreement with AD Makepeace. Right. Yeah. Maybe some of their staff would be able to tell us if there's a farm plan covered as that would bring it in. Spot. Yeah. Oh. I'd bring that in. Yeah, yeah that would be I, the best bet on that. I, I, I will inquire tomorrow okay. uh, as to what the status of what he has or, or doesn't have. And uh, then we'll go in the direction of, of okay. getting one updated or getting one. Uh, okay, that makes sense. So I would go yeah. for it. Continuation. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, so let's make a motion to continue. Uh, and our next meeting is on the 21st. 21st. All right, I'll make a motion that to. That good for you? Well, you think yeah. you're come anyway for the parking lot. You think right. you'll have a. And, and if we have the answer to that, we'll, we'll bring it. If we don't, we'll, we'll okay. continue that one down the road yeah. and still do the parking lot. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, I make a motion that we continue uh, the hearing for Zero Rochester Road, DEP, SE 126-555 until uh, Wednesday, February 21st. February 21st. Okay. All right, you want a second? Yeah, I can make that one. You need to Better. second. Oh, I second. I'm sorry. <laughs> Been moved and we seconded to here. continue the uh, hearing for uh, DEP SE 126-555 until February 21st. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passed. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Thanks.
dropped off several. Oh, I got one. I should have at least three. Hmm. I know you do with the original. I have, I have an additional one. I think I only have the one. I'm fine where he is. Okay. I'm good. I can stand. So we got more? This, this, but this one has, yeah, I have the old one. You be in the chair and all. Oh, the grumpy one. I still haven't moved the foundation. So. Okay. Let's see what they got. Okay. So. Good evening, Jamie Bissonette, Zenith Consulting Engineers, for the record, along with Attorney R Sarkey. Richard M. Sarkey, with Mr. Bissonette. Um. I know at the last meeting uh, we had a proposal in front of you um, asking for uh, construction of the single family dwelling with also a variance for the deck into the 65 foot. Um, and we went back and reconfigured the plan as you have now. We've minimized the work in the buffer zone. Um, we've pulled the limit of clearing and limit of work as far out of the 65 foot as possible. Eliminated the deck completely, narrowed up areas of work, uh, modified the driveway. I uh, really tried to tighten things up on site uh, make it to make it a more permittable project for the commission. Um, I'd be happy to try to address any specific concerns that you may have or go over the plan with you in detail if you have any questions. Uh, I'll be straightforward and say that you've made no attempt to move the house out of the outside the 100 foot line. And this is the item that I showed you that night in our wetlands bylaw. Sir, I, I wasn't here at the last meeting. It was, um, no. it was someone else. No. no, it was the, it was the other person. It was another yeah, guy for Same company. It was another Sorry. person from my office. Same company. Same company. <laughs> Does he look the same? Yeah. I, I, didn't, I don't have a photo of him. I think you're the same uh, guy. Dig, yeah. dig a foundation. <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Yes. The previous fine, plan required a variance because a part of the structure was going to be within the 65-foot no structure zone. This plan does not require a variance because no structure is going to be within the 65 foot no build zone. Now, but your digging will. Eight you dig this foundation where. Time out, Mr. Sir. Surely. Our wetlands bylaw, yes. statement of jur jurisdiction, except as permitted by the commission, as provided by this bylaw, no person shall blank, 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 yeah. uh, fill, dredge, alter, or build within 100 feet. Un understood. L let me just finish, Mr. Okay. Chairman. So I have no doubt about the fact, and I'm not questioning the fact that you have jurisdiction, because we're acting within 100 feet of the wetland line. Well, we have a. I think you're missing it, sir. L you're, let me. You're, we have a. We have a town bylaw within 100 feet. I, I understand that. Let okay. Me, let me just, just. So you understand okay. that. I understand that fully. Okay. What I want to make clear is the fact that. If we were building a structure within 65 feet of the wetland line, we would need a variance from this commission. We're not. We need permission from the commission because we're, we're moving earth, we're, we're, we're acting within, we're moving earth and we're building within 100 feet. And every case that comes before you for which a notice of intent is filed and for which an order of conditions is requested involves something going on within that 100 feet. So this is no different than any of them. We are building a structure beyond the no build line. We're asking for permission. We need your permission. I'm not questioning the fact that we need your permission. What I'm saying is, is that we don't need a variance. Mm -hmm. So the question becomes, what is the scope of your authority if we're not building any structures within the 65 feet and if we don't need a variance. And we need your permission and you certainly have the right to condition what we're requesting. And I suppose to take it to the extreme, you would have the right, you could say no, 
but I, sus I s respectfully submit to you that when we're asking for permission in the form of an order of conditions and we're not asking for a variance, then the imposition of conditions is the way in which a commission normally influences a notice of intent rather than an outright denial. It's like site plan approval from the zoning context. In site plan approval, the response usually is conditions that make the project amenable Absolutely. to the town rather than an outright denial. Now, show me a case that comes before you that does not involve alteration of land or the building of structures within 65 feet, uh, within 100 feet. It's the second 35 feet, okay, that we can, with your permission, um, build a structure on. And within the, the, the first 65 feet, we can alter the, the contour of the land with your permission. But, but tell me, tell me why this is any different from any other matter that comes before you. Because well, the entire could, structure, sorry, right because the entire structure is within the 100 feet. We have not, I, in my tenure here, have not, I believe, ruled on something where an entire structure has been built from the ground up within the 100 feet. Oh, I can show you examples, well, sir, in well, which that has occurred. That, be, that being said, In my sir. tenure. Well, okay, I can show you examples in which that occurred. I, I would assume that in many cases, structures are built beyond the first 65 feet and within the, the, the next 35 feet. The issue here, there are a couple of issues that I find with it. Sir. Sure. Uh, is the, it's a wooded lot that actually the, the trees actually hold that lot where it is because it's so steep. Yeah. That being said, if you take a look at where the well is going, it is within the 65 foot, and that's a wooded area down through that's there. That's not a structure under the definition. It's, it's still, it's within the oh, 65 foot. I know it is, but you're okay. by... And to me, drilling well is a structure. Well, I looked at that, and the definition of structure under the zoning bylaw is an instrumentality that's built on the ground. And the examples that are given are things like walls, fences, buildings, nothing underneath the ground. the ground. This is built on the ground. No, it's, uh, it's underneath the ground. Well, what about all the piping that goes underneath? Are you telling me because all the piping goes underneath the ground, we have no effect to that either? Well, I'm saying it's I'm not just a saying, I'm asking. Okay, I'm asking. and my answer would be, Mr. Dempsey, that under the definition of structure <coughs> in the zoning bylaw, that's not a structure. I don't agree. Well, well, I mean, we have a we just have a difference of opinion. So well, okay, I, I understand right. that, but the 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 uh, the definition in the zoning bylaw of structure is this: structure shall mean anything constructed or erected the use of which requires fixed location on the ground, including but not limited to buildings, wireless communications facilities and equipment, swimming pools satellite dishes, tennis courts, and animal enclosures. Now, I see that as ground up. I don't see the, a well as a structure. Yeah. The, the issue here is going to be, I don't know how you're going to get that well down there without tearing half the woods apart. It's very right. thickly wooded right once, there. Once you tear those, cut those trees down, that whole to go to the, go. that's right, that whole slope will start to collapse through there. And we just, we just don't feel this is suitable. Well, I, I think that if you were to insist as a condition that before any occupancy permit were to issue that the commission would have to be satisfied that the third, 65 feet has been in fact restored to a reasonable condition and the same condition it was in before that would be that would be reasonable i think because that because that would satisfy the concerns to protect that first 65 feet. These trees are 65, 75 feet tall. Now, they carry a very massive root system to them. Yeah. You cut those trees out. They're holding that hill. Look at just look at the topo on this thing. How it is? It's how close that is. Just yeah. look at the look how how high, how steep. steep it is. You cut that root system out. We're going to have some real issues there. Well, I, I, I'm going to ask Mr. Bissonette if he can comment on, because he's more knowledgeable than I am on this, as to what could be done to prevent the scenario that Mr. Dempsey is describing, if you know, 
when it comes to drilling that well? Sure. I mean, th there can be stabilization measures taken. Again, nothing is a guarantee when you're dealing with stabilization. And, uh, and again, long-term growth is a fantastic uh, bank and slope uh, guardian, I, I guess. I don't know how you can replace a root system with those trees. Just, the only you know, thing you... Only, literally, if you, I've seen that. I've been there. Those mm -hmm. hills, and I'm sure you have I too. have, yep. You see those, how those big root systems are holding that hill together. Mm -hmm. Those trees weren't there. That that wetlands would be right up against the road. Everything would be pulled right down into it. Yeah, realistically, the, the way that we would approach something like this on a steep on a steep embankment would be plantings and jute mat with an aggressive planting up top, an aggressive growth of, um, uh, of some type of seed mixture, forestry seeding. Um, jute mat can be fantastic for holding back uh, dirt and, and allowing natural vegetation to grow. You see it on the sides of highways when they have very yeah. steep embankments. And so, I've also seen them spill over and down onto the highway. A absolutely. So, if you it's could happened. show us mm -hmm. a similar situation, results from another uh, area, and um, that is, say, five years, ten years old, show us what's happened there, might change my view of it. Okay. We'll take that invitation up. Okay. Now, right. but the biggest single thing I have is the fact that the house is to be within 100 feet. And our, we just don't want that. As a matter of fact, we have a house that was built within 100 feet on Meadow Street. And it was built there due to the <coughs> duplicity of uh, a surveyor and his team. We measured the distance from the top of the bank to the uh, stakes as 100 feet, 6 inches. And we walked away from it happy. And then the town building uh, uh, people came along and said, well, hey, it's got to be 50 feet back from the road, and you've only got it 40 feet back from the road. So they gaily moved the stakes 10 feet back, which now made it not 100 feet 6 inches, it made it 90 feet 6 inches. And that foundation was built, and uh, I was away, and I called and to the Conservation Commission, and I asked them that they deny this, and they order it moved, and they did not. So that house exists, and every time that bog gets sprayed with uh, uh, fertilizer or whatever, those people and their yard get sprayed. If they're out in the yard, they get whatever sprayed on them, dropped on them, because of the fact that their house was built too close. That's the reason for the distance. It's to give a barrier to the agricultural group and keep them from injuring the, the homeowner. Mr. Chairman, the bylaw does not require a variance for 100 feet. You're right. It doesn't require a variance. It, has, it says, except as permitted. Right. Okay. That's, that's right. That's not a, that really doesn't mean that we can issue a variance. It says permitted. Right. That's right. Okay. So the question is... It, Are we going to permit it? Exactly. Right. And, and, and what I'm, all I'm saying, Mr. Chairman, is that as the applicant, the applicant has to satisfy you, if he can, that there are no conditions that there that you have to say that there are no conditions whatsoever under which this could be permitted it's different than if i had to apply for a variance and i had to make the strict Correct. showing of a variance i don't now in terms of the comment that mr moore made i happen to be looking at a decision from may of 2016 mm -hmm. i don't know if you were on the commission in may of 2016 what's the location mr Serkey? uh it was um six purchase street Mill Pond Builders, and it involves the construction of uh, another Williams slot. Um, a struck is, yeah, it's a, a massive crossing with yes. through the wetlands yes, to yes. access to construct oh, a single-family house. Here. That's correct. I, ha I have it right here. So yeah. there's structure within the wetland, w within the wetland, and um, and, and so it's, it's happened before. And and all I'm saying is is that you. You have discretion as to whether to grant permission or not to grant permission. But my s respectful suggestion is that in, when you're not within the first 65 feet, then you require conditions to make sure that your legitimate interests can be satisfied, such as the one you said about showing us where it's worked or m m making sure that, that 
with respect to the well which is which is obviously within the sixty five feet that it can be constructed and maintained in such a way that it does not bring about the fears that mr dempsey said this lot at six purchase street is the result of a long lot which ran from main street over to purchase street and then it was subdivided and when it was subdivided it cut off legitimate access which was actually from main street you know it was never intended to have access from purchase street but because of the fact that that was sold and split then all of a sudden we've got a new owner with property here and he wants to build on this well we found wetlands down in there so when, and that bridge that was built there that, that bridge that was built there was uh, built actually without the conservation commission's uh approval it's shown yeah. on the plan yeah, that bridge was there it's, it's as that a, was there that's right it's it's a it's shown in fact but it was not approved by us to build but that was built by mr williams the we're talking about we're also talking mr chairman we're also talking about a, a a basically a structure that grows across it but is but it's not a house it's just a driveway but it was pre-existing. Yeah, yeah. pre-existing. It was a pre-existing thing. Well, it but was in the same thing, it wasn't a full house. It was simply a driveway that was put through there. Not that's, a full house. That's right. They actually, there that that driveway was put in after um, we here. told them that he had to work on the wetlands down there, yeah. and some work was done. No, it certainly wasn't. But it certainly was. The house is the house within the hundred feet. Oh, yeah. the house is sixty-four feet. I'm looking at another uh, another example. Um, this one is from Mr. Emerson. It's 13 Woodhaven Street, mm -hmm. and in that particular case, the house is well within the hundred feet, mm -hmm. and uh, this was approved. Uh, and I have the DEP, and this is from June of 2012. Uh, right. So I mean, the idea that that there's a building within a hundred but beyond 65 is not at all unusual well it is unusual but it has happened it's unusual yeah. but it has happened Pe people people <laughs> certain things happen but uh, you know we basically try and prevent them from happening we try and try and keep we have rules we try and keep the, the rules and right. every so often somebody slips outside the rules and the question is whether we let them get away with it or not yeah. and I think that this situation of this lot the arrangement physical configuration of this lot is so severe that we should not have it built upon okay so is your is is your focus is the main concern that I'm hearing from the three of you the 65 or the 35 it's the 35 <laughs> feet of the hundred where the house is or is it the 65 feet now we're, we're concerned about the entire sir is it just the 65 yeah. we're we're he's just talking about the entire lot as it is yeah I mean it's it's a difficult lot I must say the fellow who appeared last last uh, meeting said yeah. well it's a buildable lot as though that meant anything he says buildable lot just means that it has enough room on it well understood understood right. no, ironically and, and we have a he thought that mandated that he would therefore have the right to build on no, 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 no I understand that I, ironically we have a building permit but 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 that saying. was jumping the gun because we have to be here right no no doubt about that <laughs> but but all I'm saying is, is that I would like to take your invitation up to come back to you to show that the installation of this well is uh, not going to bring about the parade of horribles that you may fear, and to satisfy you that with the right conditions it won't. As far as the as far as where the structure goes, I, I, there's no way we can build on the lot unless it's within the next 65 feet because. The, the lot doesn't ap uh, 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 allow for room to do so. Yes. So, so. This is what I, I've been saying all along. I know this that. This is not a buildable lot in that respect because it's not big enough to allow the house to be built uh, given the setbacks required. It's not big enough to allow that and still have the 100 foot from the wetland line. But your bylaw does not say, does not say <laughs> that. I need a variance to put the house. Oh, except, it says I, except as I permitted. Just okay, and I suspect you ask, you to permit it, and, right. and I'm it, saying no. Okay, all, all I'm saying with respect is that is that 
when permission is needed but a variance is not needed, there's got to be a very good reason as to why conditions won't satisfy you. Now, with respect to the, to the house in the, in the second 35 feet of that 100 feet, hmm? what um, I'm trying to think, uh, and maybe I'll ask my, my colleague here, Mr. Bissonnette, as to what we might do to satisfy you that the, the wetlands, which you're here justifiably to protect, won't be injured by the construction of the house within that 35 feet. What more could we do on the ground to, to protect the wetlands that Oops, sorry, uh, buddy. are uh, 65 feet away? Sure. Well, <coughs> may, I just, may I just add one thing sure. before, before you answer the question? It's not only during the construction of the house. Oh, it's during the good. occupancy of the house as well. Understood. And, and right? that might require monitoring conditions. Well, thereafter, yeah. I, right. I fully understand. I'll, I'll let you speak. Then that, there are things that I would like to yeah. bring up, but go ahead. Sure. So from a construction standpoint, um, we're proposing to have at the narrowest point behind the house, not including the well, roughly 45 feet to the, to the closest point of clearing at this point, allowing roughly 45 plus foot buffer uh, that's going to be untouched of wooded area to the wetland area. Um, at, during construction, we're proposing double hay bale with silt fence for erosion I control. Saw that. Yeah. Again, one of the things that we're going to research is now that I understand that slope stabilization is critical. While we're proposing three to one sloping, and um, and we would be looking to have everything stabilized, obviously prior to a certificate of compliance, um, we will be coming in with examples of how jute mat or other stabilization methods can work on slopes to give the commission some sort of comfort for that work on the steep slopes. Uh, right behind the house and in the house area though, a three to one slope is not unusually steep. Um, it's very standard around septic systems that you th see three to one. It's not the most comfortable slope to play on, but it's very reasonable as far as construction and maintenance is concerned. I also think that you should, you could have to move that house about five feet to the left there. Well, this is the, no, five feet this way well, to get it out of the 65 foot because he's you know when they start that foundation I'm gonna these are their setbacks like though right here well, that's not our problem I know. Uh, all right that's not our problem the the where I'm somewhat concerned mm -hmm. is that um, in in the uh, bylaws as mr. Uh, now has read saying except as permitted uh, no person shall remove fill dredge alter or build upon mm -hmm. now alter I mean we already know that you want to build upon within the hundred feet so that's one thing that what? Uh, you want to build within the hundred feet yes. yes so that's one thing except is permitted Correct. right the other thing is alter now I'm going to read what our bylaws state as altering mm -hmm. removal excavation or dredging of soil sand gravel and aggregate materials mm -hmm. that can happen yeah, it is. Well, oh, yes. the well within okay. 100 feet, sure. absolutely. Changing of pre-existing drainage characteristics. Yes. Uh, placing a fill or removal of materials which will alter elevations. Yep. Correct, yes. Yeah, that's why okay. we're here. All right, destruction of plant life, including cutting of trees. Yes. Okay, so that's a lot of things that are in the definition reasons. of alter that sure. we need to protect against, and that's what we're cited to our, do. That's in our bylaw. That this is this is why we're here. Mm -hmm. No dispute. No, absolutely and, agree. And uh, you know, I we did a site visit. We walked around. Uh, I went up and down that hill, and um, I, I this really, really concerns me. All of the things, all of the alterations that would have to happen to build this house, and I also worry about the precedent that it sets moving forward um, for a house that not only is entirely within the uh, 35 feet but yeah, is but abuts it. it it's your foundation line is right at the 65 foot and there are carvers probably going to be growing in the next 10 15 20 years there are a lot of properties that are close to wetlands do we want to 
do we want to set a precedent here which now we would be forced to allow anyone who wants to build at 65 feet? Let me, let me answer that if I can by this. What we're suggesting is in order to show the, the respect that the commission deserves <coughs> and the respect that the bylaw deserves, we're in essence putting the designer's pen in your hands and saying we will do whatever it takes to make sure that the interests that you're here to protect are protected. That's that, and, and you know, and, and I respect you for the job you do, that's your job, to protect those wetlands. And so what I'm saying is there's got to be, through what Mr. B Bissonette has said and perhaps what other ideas may come to our mind between now and the next hearing, there must be a way in which we can protect those wetlands without an outright no and saying there's nothing that could be done to protect them. Well, the other and, and we're, we're willing to do what it I takes. You were done. I'm Pardon sorry. me? I'm sorry. I thought you were, you were done. The other thing is, it, it, because a comment was mentioned about what happens after construction and after people move in. Okay. Maybe that That's was your next thought. Right there. Uh, I, I don't have any problem uh, with the idea of periodic certifications to the commission so that the commission can come out and make sure that what was there at the time the occupancy permit was issued is still in place. That's, that's done in other contexts to make sure that something doesn't get degraded through neglect. And that can be recorded as a covenant against the title. So Not that only neglect, but through uh, deliberate ignorance. Yes. Right, that's right. right so, but, what, but what's the what's the result of that? If what if what if the whoever moves in here does cut down trees going down the slope? Well, then, no, we they slow, they we're, go, we're taking your house down. No, no. What what I'm suggesting oh. is is that a, a a a covenant could be recorded against the title, and the covenant would list the things that can't be done, the, and list the fact that if they are done in, in violation of the covenant, that sanctions can be imposed by against the landowner, and it can re require periodic inspection and periodic not in, so that wouldn't take up town time. It could require a periodic certification at an interval that's comfortable to you, in which a registered professional over his stamp and seal and once certifies to you that the conditions that you imposed at the time the occupancy permit issued still exist. And if that isn't done, th that, become, that becomes uh, a, um, in the person's chain of titles. Anybody buying the property would know what he's s signing on to. It's similar, not that this is the analogy I want to use, but it's similar to a tight tank. You know, get, oh, it's similar a, to a what? A, a tight tank. Oh, a tight tank. Sorry. Okay. Oh, yeah. In which, in which there has to be obviously yeah. monitoring to make sure that what's supposed to happen happens, okay? And I'm perfectly willing to, to, to sit my client down and say, in a situation like this, this is something you have to be prepared to do. And quite frankly, anybody who buys a property like this and uh, uh, has any kind of pride in, in not only its condition, but also in his duty to comply with the law won't be deterred by it, and your interest will be safeguarded. And that runs with the land. We do have the no activity post, which we probably would have. I'm sorry. No activity. Yeah. Sign. I can do what do you know, stamp that to the foundation. Right. That's right. That on the line. Be, yeah. Yeah. And those. Well, there's. It's indicated where they want to put them, and that's at the limit yeah. of the works. Yeah. Yeah. And but and what we've proposed. Well, I don't in, want the limit of work down here. The limit of work should be up here. And what we've done in many other communities, other towns, is post and rail fence with the signs applied to them along the limit of work mm -hmm. that creates a long-term uh, fence with um, a boundary that's not easy to go past, but it's very clear for anybody that's there um, that there's not really an excuse to go beyond it and do anything beyond it with the signs. And the decision, the decision from the board could have a copy of that plan appended to it and it could be recorded at the Registry of Deeds, so, so there would be no there, doubt. There are more things you're doing here. You're changing the grade within the 65 foot. You're changing all the grades back there, and you're putting your limit of work 
so that the limit of work is now only 65 feet from the BVW. Forty-five. Uh, Forty-five feet, I'm sorry, from the BVW. Yeah. So you're changing all of this too. It isn't that they're stopping a house there. They're also coming within the 65 foot to change, you know, all the hard lines. But again, the reason that we're doing that is to create a sustainable grade that that will work. Like we said, it's I not a one-to-one -one riprap slope. It's it's not a, an unachievable, unmaintainable grade. Um, this well, this uh, was it one foot per foot. It's one per it's one foot per three at the tightest, and it's one per foot per five. It's a three to one tip. Pitch. Yep, three to one, which is what we use for breakout around septic systems. Okay. So it's common in front yards. Goes down three would feet for every one foot. That would that would be grass stabilized be grass. area. Yep. Yeah, it won't hold. On the three to one, no. absolutely will. Yeah, th three to one is the um, is the, the limit max. we specify yeah, for earth removal yep. on the edge of bogs yeah, and so on and so forth. They're still doing it's all that work within the sixty-five foot. Yeah, you're, you're yeah, right. Yeah, but it's great. Uh, again, it's to it's to it's to catch the grade to provide that stabilized slope that the commission's looking for. You, from from the street Boulders. coming back, we've Boulders. maximized the ro the, the driveway the grade um, there, the to a safe right. maximum elevation difference. We're providing um, water to flow in the proper directions and we've off. tried to provide for stabilization on every aspect. Yeah, I do understand putting in the well and coming up with a, um, a plan um, to, come to protect that slope and possibly even do some plantings to restabilize that area. That, that makes perfect sense to me. Uh, but the reason for the, the grading in that 65 foot is yeah. purely to long-term stabilization. I'm looking at your limit of work. It's, it's way past what, if you take a look at these, the limit of work is way past the house. Just take a look at that, guys. I see it. Yeah. It's so way past do, the so house. The, the limit grade. of work wraps all the way down past the well and comes back in over here. So all of this gets cleared. All of that gets cleared. Does the um, so it's for the grading and for the insulation. Yeah, but that's one yeah, line. Well. Does the driveway go into a basement garage? Uh, no. Um, I'm to be honest with you, I'm not sure off the top of my head. All right, because I see the elevation at the driveway just about at the house is 95, and the elevation in front of the house towards the, towards the west is 102. So that's a seven foot difference, and maybe, you know. Top of foundation is 104. 104. So there is a nine foot difference between the driveway and the uh, yeah. top of the foundation. Mm -hmm. So I would assume that there is a basement there. My question then is there, is there a rear egress from that basement? There, there would be some kind of an egress, most likely either on the side or yeah. in the rear. Mm -hmm. yeah. Into that's the 65 foot. Well, the, again, the. the the option would be more towards the side where the driveway is in this case. I, I think we were reading you loud and clear at the last meeting um, to have no egresses out the back. Mm -hmm. Too much clearing down here. Look, this is all clearing area. That's, that's enough for me. It is a, the issue here, what I see is the limit of, limit of work and the clearing that goes all the way down within 45 feet of the BVW and re, redoing all, clearing all that woods, all the woods all the way down where it, it shows it all the way down to the well, everything gets cleared out. Uh, I can't go for that. Personally, I just don't think it's right. 
I'm, I'm more concerned with the slope right behind the house. Going well, out, too, going out it's, to it's the well, also, they can replant. But, That's not going to affect the downslope so much here. Well, it won't, but it will over here. Over here, it yeah, really does. That's huge. Yeah, I'm, I, that that's what concerns me. But, uh, you know, I uh, I like to make a proposal that we we go to a vote, get this off the table. Well, you, do you, you don't want to continue then, Tim? No, I don't want to continue. So I want to I want to go for a vote only only because of this right here. The ability to come back and show you but what it, it is, sir. It isn't it isn't the it isn't the it's the it's the the site in its entirety mostly because of the clearing area you have to do to come down and, and off of that and I I can't see it I just, you know it's too much it's just too much it's it's I understand what you're saying sir but the the limit of work is way out too far it's 45 maybe, feet though, that with the with the with with um, the conditions and the covenant the conditions reflected on the plan, covenants not we would at least have a record on which to appeal if we had to, and we also might be able to get a second vote or the other two votes. Mm. So I am going to propose that we go for a vote right now. So Mr. Chairman, do, okay. you, you want to move to? Uh, I'd like to move okay. uh, to take a vote on where the hell is the address on this? Uh, what Tim was Tim is. Tim is saying he doesn't want to move to continue. Right. He wants to vote on the the proposal. Right. Are you, are you going to close the? I'm going to vote on the first. proposal. Okay. We're going to close the meeting and then vote. Close, close the hearing first. Yeah. Close the hearing. I vote that we close the hearing on what? Four A, Wenham Road, Harbor, Massachusetts. I need a second. I I I hope you don't close it. But I haven't gotten a second call. yet. No. Yeah. I'm not going to second. I would like to continue. Yes, I'd like to continue also. All right. Thank you. That takes care of that. We're going to continue it. Okay. Thank so you. I'll make a motion that we continue the hearing um, at uh, 4A Wenham Road until uh, February 21st. Great. It's February 21st. Second. Let's I'll see, second. We have, we have two hearings at 715. We have uh, yeah, so it would be after we have 7:15 and 7:30, so it would be 7:45. Probably, well, because he won't be ready for Andrew's point. Right. Right. Okay. So say 7:45. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Okay. And so it's been moved and seconded to uh, continue the hearing to uh, 7:45 on uh, February 21st. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passed. And now uh, that's that. Twenty <laughs> first. Uh, two two weeks from tonight. Yeah, February twenty first. Uh, am I going? I'm trying to think if I'm going to be here. Seven forty five. You probably you probably won't say a time on it because we don't usually give time for people to show that it's too ahead of you, so you don't have to rush to get here. All right. Well, thank you very much. Jim. Thank you. Rick. You're welcome. Thank, thank you, Jamie. Thanks. I'll make a motion that we adjourn. Oh, he wants to adjourn. Really? He wants to go home. Okay, I'll second that one. <laughs> uh, is, there anything, is there anything that you, you need to anything else? Anything more to discuss? Are we done? I think we're done. All right. Nothing else on the agenda. Okay, so it's been moved and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Pass unanimous.